Hey everyone, it's Vos, I'm here with Tails, and today we're going to be reviewing the Bitmain Antminer E3 and showing you how to get yours set up and covering some common problems because when we took ours out of the box, it didn't actually work. So Bitmain originally sold the Batch 1 Antminer E3 before Ethereum announced that it was not going to bother with forking because in my opinion, Vitalik and the rest of the team, for the most part, not to generalize them all, but for the most part, are simply out of touch with really maybe everything other than coding. But that's a whole other subject. We talked about that some in our recent Ethereum mining news video. So these originally uh, went up for sale at $800 and this is one of those. I didn't buy it, I am borrowing this. So thanks to Edward Grubb for letting me borrow this Miner E3. Again, I said I wouldn't buy it and I didn't. And let me explain just exactly why. The E3, which a lot of people are dismissing as just, oh, well, it's similar to a GPU rig in performance. And even in the later price, because after Ethereum announced that they were not gonna fork, they bumped the price up for the same exact unit to $2,000. That's insane. And if that doesn't show you what kind of seller we're dealing with, I don't know what else to tell you. But either way, you know, since then, much more powerful Ethereum ASIC miners have come out. There's a uh, ASIC miner for Ethereum Attach that has 500 mega hash coming on the horizon. So again, just understand what we're dealing with. There's also more rumors, um, with, and Ogata Girl is chiming in saying this is true as well, which is Christy from uh, Minority and all that stuff. She says that there's a 10x more powerful uh, theory Masic miner coming soon. So you do your math. It's, you know, within 2018, we're gonna have one giga hash a second at hash miner. So, wow. <laughs> at least we have the Dogecoin here. She can tell us all about ASIC mining because ASIC mining ruined Dogecoin. But again, another day, another subject. <laughs> Let's get to the actual review. Basically, they packed 16 or 18. I'm gonna go over the teardown of the Ant Miner E3 later on in the video and show you guys some of that stuff. But there's basically 16 or 18. I forget off the top of my head essential GPUs packed into this. I think it's the equivalent of like a 550 and they're using DDR3 RAM and some people are talking crap, you know, saying, oh, it's a little DDR3 junk piece uh, ASIC miner. Well, for the actual purpose of mining this algorithm, a lot of uh, some other people are saying that DDR3 is actually making this more effective than using DDR4 RAM. So don't be just so quick to dismiss something that's viewed as older tech because the way it is designed may in fact actually make it more useful for mining this said algorithm. If you're wondering about the specifications, originally stated at 180 mega hash a second, now the newer ones that are for sale that are selling for about 1300 bucks are listed at 190 mega hash. This is getting an average hash rate pool side, mining Ethereum as well as Ethereum Classic of almost 200 mega hash a second, pulling about 760 watts. We're gonna pull it up right here on 120 volt with the Bitmain APW3++, their official power supply recommended for this unit. I'm gonna show you exactly what we're dealing with. Due to the nature of this machine, even though it is twice the size of an average ant miner and equivalent ASIC miner, which is an application specific integrated circuit, aka a computer built for just one thing, and that is simply mining. This can only mine at hash, and that's it. So, you know, we've got the two fans up front, but there's no fans on the back side. So, We've got the normal amount of fans on a normal ASIC miner. And with the chip design, the fans actually don't have to run at wide open throttle the entire time. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like when we fire it up and put it on the decibel meter. Just kidding, I almost forgot to tell you about my main problem I had. So I went ahead and I hooked this up just like I did with every other ASIC miner we reviewed here at the Voscoin mining farm, and it didn't work. It just kept saying error, and it was getting pretty frustrating. So what solved this? for me personally, is I ended up powering on just the control board, which means that I took the power supply and I had it plugged into just this control board, control board and I was not powering any of the hash ports, no connections going in here. So only the control board was powered on. I let it run like that. Actually, I went ahead and went and made lunch, so it ran like that for at least like about an hour or so. Came back, turned it off, took the plug out just for good measure, plugged everything back up, turned it back on, and keep in mind that these take much longer to get set up because initially they're gonna to have to set up the DAG file, which is an important uh, piece, which is over three gigabytes that's needed to be initialized before you're able to mine on the Ethereum blockchain. Anyway, once all that took place and happened, it was about, you know, within 10 minutes or so, and this was up hash and away. It works on Ethereum as well as everything else on the ETH hash algo, and I am personally mining Ethereum Classic, and I'll go ahead and go into the profits of that. Setting up the actual 
hardware side of your amp miner will always be ridiculously easy. You're gonna grab your ethernet cable, you're gonna go ahead and plug that right in. As far as power, you've got two six pin PCIe connections run into each hash board. There's three, so you got two, 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 we got, so we got six there, and then you have one six pin running into the control board, which is actually an FPGA control board, which is uh, pretty cool stuff, and that's how they managed to make these a little versatile. So after you go ahead and plug that in, we are going to, it's gonna be a little weird. The, this is such a tall unit. It's actually better to just go ahead and set it on its side. Otherwise, if you're just using racks in your farm, you can just put it on the rack above and drop the cables down, which is another easy solution for you there. So I went ahead and turned it over. I'm gonna get all this stuff plugged up. Once we connect this power port into the amp miner power supply, it's going to be on. With the amp miner power supply, there's no on or off switch. Power, plug in, on, plug out is off. I've also got this basic decibel monitor app open on my iPhone. It's been one of the requested uh, pieces of my ASIC reviews here. So I've got this so you guys will know exactly how loud it is per this app. And I'll have links to all the stuff I'm using and where to get all this stuff if you want it in the description below. And thank you for you guys that are always commenting, giving any kind of feedback. I read every single comment. So without further ado, let's see, uh, let's see how loud the Antminer E3 actually is. So you can hear the fans just kicked up. Before the fans kicked on, we're sitting at about 60 decibels with the fans on. So we got the two front intake fans running you know basically full speed here 100 decibels which is pretty loud this isn't something that your girlfriend is going to be stoked if you put it in your bedroom it's probably going to ruin your relationship so lucky for me that's not working i'm getting that same error again so i went ahead and i plugged in just the control board i'm gonna let it run for a couple minutes and then i'm gonna try plugging the boards the hash boards back in jump man just plugged it back up as you see it's going to do initial boot sequence and then the extremely loud typical standard issue ASIC fans are going to kick on and we will see if it works this time. What do you guys think about the new haircut? I know it's day two. What do you guys think? I mean, you know, this is a good look. Should I keep it? I know you're all dudes, so you know what? Never mind. Alright, so we finally got it situated. I guess it looks like it turns out, don't quote me if this doesn't fix your problem, but it looks like if you leave any default pool configurations in your miner, you're going to have that issue or the tendency to have that issue. As you can see um, right now, the fans are on auto and they are significantly quieter while it's actually mining. It's actually entered the mining phase. We're here in my garage and normally, you know, it's like 72, 70 degrees in here. I recently added these fans behind me. Man, they made a world of difference for just some quality of life while being in here. But um, I got two miners running in here, so the heat's up a little bit. And, you know, anyway, so just, that's it. The temperature's about 75 degrees. The decibel it's putting out is about 70. Okay, so that's that's what you could expect in a 75 degree environment with this miner, which is actually extremely low compared to other ASIC miners, and I think that's due, well, that is obviously due just to the to the design of this and the fact that these are basically just GPUs. It's like if you had an RX 560 rig. Remember, we built one of those, and the cooling was so easy on those, so easy, because they're just small, efficient cards. So without further ado. Well, let's get to the screen capture part. All right, so now we are in the miner. I'm gonna show you how to get it set up with mining Ethereum. So I've got Ethermine, or Ethermine open right here. So we need to grab our server. What we're gonna do, I'm on US East Coast. So I'm gonna grab US East Coast. And then I will come over here and I will put it into the URL. So I'm gonna paste the server and then colon whatever the port is. So I believe it's 444. It's the same they use on uh, either the Ethereum Classic version of their mining pool. And I think that might be the same with their Zcash one, maybe it's 3333. So either way, I'm just talking about random stuff now. We got the server name, we've got the port, or our password, it says just leave empty, and our username is going to be our Ethereum address. If we do that, that means we can also add a worker name if we want, if we want to. So let's just say that this is your Ethereum address, right? So we'll say that, and if you wanted to add a worker, you could add dot worker. I'll have this in the video description. You can just copy and paste it and take it right out if you want to. Once you put everything you want in here, you go ahead and click save and apply. Again, with the issue we were facing earlier, make sure you don't leave any default pools or you're gonna to continue to have a bad time like me. And I hope that fixes your issue. If it doesn't, contact Bitman there. 
they have a warranty, you know. They, they might get you taken care of eventually, maybe, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually plugged this miner in about 10 minutes ago or so, more or less, maybe seven, and it just now started mining. It, this is going to take a long time to start mining, and this was on Ethereum Classic, which will initialize faster than Ethereum, so you're gonna have to wait even longer. However, at no point did I click on miner status and I, get, and I got that error that I was telling you about. So at that point, it just ends up needing to be a waiting game. If you wanna see what everything looks like, after it's been mining for almost three days this is what you're going to be dealing with again i had the default pools in there don't do that you might have a bad time like me and you can see our hash rate average over three days was 197 mega hash a second obviously with all those miners out there we didn't find any blocks and you can see our accepted shares are rejected and that actually is a it's a pretty good ratio for this kind of machine. All the relevant information you could want on your temperature is going to be right here and right here. If your ASIC status is OO, that's good. If it's XX, that's bad. It's also going to go ahead and show our fan speed. Right now, we can go ahead and refresh and you can see in that 75 degree environment, it looks like it's spinning about 2800 RPMs. You can see those chips are going to be much, or the temperatures on the uh, chip and PCB are going to be much lower because this is a setup on the inside of my house in my garage Which again has those AC vents uh, leading in there now as well as Compared with my shed which is cool from outside air again just to touch on what I talked about earlier the batch one $800 shipping July 16th to 31st then the next batch which is the current batch right now shipping August 1st to 10th So basically like very soon obviously Batch four, priced at $13.28. Don't forget you're gonna need a power supply, which is their newer one, APW7, not the APW3++ we're showing, but obviously they're both gonna get, get you situated there. Uh, you know, plus shipping, plus customs. This is easily a $1,500 mining purchase. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna run some numbers off that. The projected earnings of the Antminer E3 at 10 and a half cent electric per kilowatt, which is what I pay, is 461 after your electric cost mining ethereum and 470 mining ethereum classic i'm not saying you're going to get rich mining ethereum classic but that's what i'm mining and um, you can check out my results here on the pool i have this in the description if you want to check them out again i'm not going to have this miner for long so that will go obsolete here uh shortly but if, if i took my earnings which were taken over the course of 70 hours mining ethereum classic then I was mining 0.0413 Ethereum Classic a day, which averaged out to about $7. So that's what I was earning. $7 a day in the last week of July 2018 with the Ant Miner E3. If you look at the difficulty chart, it's pretty static here. You look at the Ethereum Classic difficulty chart, all in all, it's actually pretty static. I mean, if we follow this line, that's pretty much going to give us our average right there. So next up, I'm going to show you a piece of information from an industry expert as well as a look into inside the Antminer E3. So this is Jay Stefanop off the Bitcoin Talk Forum. He's the guy who developed the USB uh, Litecoin script ASIC miners, and we had a review uh, a couple months ago back on those. But here, he's breaking it down real simple. Essentially, 18 RX 550s crammed in there. 102 gigabytes a second bandwidth using DDR3, which is pretty impressive. So a new machine, he's estimating eight gigs of RAM per ASIC to make it future-proof. Then we're going on eight gigabyte module, module goes for $8. So two per module, so they're looking at their cost. He's estimating like 1500 bucks for the next generation of this, which he is thinking is gonna do around 1.8 giga hash a second at a thousand watts. I told you guys, you know, you, you think just this Ethereum ASIC miner is the best and last? Absolutely not. Time and time again, they release a bigger, badder, and better one. So don't, don't say I didn't warn you guys. Don't say I didn't warn you. Here's a video by Justin A on YouTube. I'll have a link to this in the video description below. But he went ahead and just pulled one of the hash boards. So there's three of these. So we pulled that right out and out of his Ant Miner E3. So I'm not gonna do that with mine because, well, it's not mine. And believe it or not, I'm not huge on voiding warranties with things that I think are kind of junk quality. You know, overall with China RMA and the only, the only way people make their money back with ASIC miners 
at least, especially this year, is if they get it early and they run it 24-7, you're probably overclocking it. If you, you know, if you really want to strive to make your money back. And, uh, yeah, you can't really afford any downtime. So these are what the chips look like on the inside. And this is going to pop off. And you can see the actual Bitmain ASIC chip. So he's going to wipe this thermal paste off. I think he will. There we go. And so you can see it's the Ant Miner BM1729. or This quality is a little low. 1790. And there you have it. That's what the inside of the Bitmain Ant Miner E3 looks like. So, with all that said, guys, uh, you know, here's another look at the latest and greatest ASIC miner. Again, I talked about the new latest and greatest ones already coming to make these pretty obsolete. So, you know, do your own research and make your decision on what you want to do personally. I wouldn't recommend it, and I'm disappointed with the, the build quality in this and that, that issue. And some people may say, well, just go ahead and update your firmware. I tried to update the firmware to the latest uh, firmware for the Antminer E3, and the device was failing to update the firmware. It, I did not try it by using an SD card, just simply using the remote you know, access into the miner and loading it from my computer to do so. So maybe it'll work for you if you use the SD card. In theory, obviously it should, but in theory, everything should, if it's a you know, good sound theory. Uh, above all, make sure to subscribe to the Boss Coin YouTube channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment below and smash the thumbs up button. I'll see y'all next time.